Hey guys, Bonk here. No matter what, the quest to achieve greatness in Smash is a long and arduous one. For the most part, we all want the same thing, to get good, essentially, but there are so many different methods of practicing, and it can be very confusing to choose the best route. Playing in tournaments is great for learning to play under pressure and adapting quickly, but discourages experimentation. Playing online is good for learning lots of matchups and playstyles, but it can hurt your execution and reactions. Playing local friendlies is probably overall the best practice, but it still doesn't cover everything and often isn't readily accessible. This brings us to training mode. Although it has plenty of, um, flaws, training mode is the most accessible way to practice. Even if you have no friends to play with, no internet to get online with, and no tournaments in your area, you can always play training mode as long as you at least own the game. This one. As you'll hopefully discover in this video, training mode isn't just good because it's the easiest way to practice, but understanding how to properly use this tool will help you improve in many ways, some that you can't even access with other methods of practice. So, for the question of the day, how often do you practice in training mode? Once a week? An hour a day? Let us know down in the comments, and maybe watching this video will change your answer. If you want even more ways to practice, ProGuides.com has you covered. With our Play With Pros feature, you can access skilled coaches to personally train you. We've also got character guides, tier lists, and pro courses taught by some of the best in Smash like MKLeo. We've also recently launched live classes here on our YouTube channel. You can check out these free live classes right here on this very channel, Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications so you know as soon as those classes go live. So more so than anything, training mode is a place to practice execution. It isn't limited to this, but having your inputs down is essential to getting better at any level of Smash, so it's the best place to start. Basic execution can be broken down into a few categories. The first is movement. Moving around the stage with complete control of your character is incredibly vital to playing Smash. Fortunately, training mode is excellent for practicing this. Start with ground movement, making sure you can foxtrot and dash dance cleanly. Try to space your movement exactly as you want to. You can use the CPU character or a platform as a reference to drill yourself on getting that perfect positioning. Dash dancing too far could mean getting hit by an attack you were trying to punish, and dash dancing too short might make you miss a punish altogether, so little things like this really go a long way in competitive matches. Ground movement goes beyond just dash dancing. There are a few more important techniques to practice. Although Ultimate's fast-paced gameplay leads to lots of dashing, walking is still very useful. Walking allows your character to perform any action from a standing state, so this gives you quicker access to every grounded option compared to dashing or running. As you may know, there's a pretty significant window in which you cannot shield after starting a dash, but walking can be shielded out of at any time. If you set your stick jump to off, you can easily walk by angling your stick upwards and diagonally. With stick jump on, you'll have to slightly tilt your stick to walk without accidentally dashing, so this is very worth practicing. Either way, switching between walking and dashing on a moment's notice can be tricky to master. When you are running, Smash Ultimate's mechanics give you many options. Make sure you can dash up Smash at any distance. Doing this at very close range is a bit harder than you might think. Next, canceling your run with other actions, such as tilts and jabs, is important to practice. Make sure that you can always get the desired action, and that it's spaced exactly as you want it to be. If you didn't know, canceling run into actions can be done by either releasing the stick or pressing down while running. Doing this without another action will actually let you stop without skidding, so you can turn around and run the other way if you want to. When you feel free to traverse the ground as you like, it's time to focus on the air. If you're a beginner, the most important things to practice are RARs and short hops. Many newer players rely too much on the auto short hop mechanic, but this doesn't let you short hop with a falling aerial or with no aerial at all. Practice short hopping by releasing the jump button very quickly after pressing it. You can set a goal number and restart anytime you mess up. 10 is a good place to start, and once you can do 100 short hops in a row, you probably don't need to practice them anymore. We have a video that covers the RAR technique in greater depth, and this is super essential as well. Practice your RAR jumps with and without aerials, and make sure you can perform the input quickly and at any time you desire. Raring works differently within the initial dash frame, so it's important to put time into getting these down as well. You can go to Battlefield where the CPU will always spawn on a platform and practice RAR back airing them from many distances. 
As a quick tip, if you want to get the CPU off of a platform without hitting them, you can wave land into them from behind and then dash towards them. This works in most matchups and can actually be really useful if you want to practice platform combos. Speaking of platforms, these come into play when practicing aerial techniques as well. You can learn more about platform techniques in our dedicated video on that topic, but you should practice fast falling on the platforms, wave landing onto them, dropping through them after attacking, and ghosting through them with attacks. Although it isn't always seen as a specific technique, spacing your aerials is just as crucial as the other tech we've mentioned. With every aerial your character has, practice spacing at max distance and still hitting your opponent. Do this from a short hop and full hop, also using rising and falling aerials whenever possible. Now you can put your ground movement and air movement together and practice a constant motion of movement all around the stage. Once you feel comfortable moving around a stationary character, you can take advantage of training mode's options to practice with an active opponent. Training mode gives you a few useful options to change the CPU's action. Setting the CPU to run or jump isn't particularly useful, but setting them to play as a CPU opponent can have many benefits. Set the CPU at a low level, from 1 to 3 for starters. You're not doing this to challenge them and see if you can win, but to add the reaction element to your practice. Now when you're dash dancing, you have to adjust your control based on the CPU's changing position. The same goes for jumping and spacing aerials. What might have seemed like simple and easy movement just a moment ago now has a new layer of depth. The forward smash and neutral special options come in handy as well, mostly for practicing parries. This is best with projectiles as you can practice many parries back to back. Alright, moving on to the next major aspect of training mode, you can practice combos. There are a few things you'll want to understand before going any further. For starters, go to the second list of options and turn stale moves on. This will simulate combos much more accurately compared to real gameplay. Next, everything in training mode is much easier with the reset input. By pressing both triggers and the A button at the same time, you can reset training mode whenever you want. This maintains the percents you set for both characters and returns you to your original spawn positions. When practicing combos, this is a huge help. Lastly, keep in mind that the CPU will not DI like a human opponent. This does limit your combo practice a bit, but you can set the CPU to hit stun shuffle to at least simulate SDI. Understanding these, you can get to your combo practice. After an update to training mode, the combo meter is actually pretty accurate, so if your combo shows up as true, it usually will be, at least with whatever DI the CPU chose. Because of this, you should strive to get any combo to show up on the meter if you know it's true. Just be aware that stringing together hits is still worth practicing, even if they're never a true combo. It's very easy to change your opponent's percent in training mode, so you can practice all of your combos in any matchup. As we mentioned, combo practice in training mode isn't perfect, but if you can't land every true combo you have on a CPU in training mode, it's a necessary step. Training mode has a few more features, and although you should spend most of your time grinding movement and combos, there's more to get out of this tool. You're usually best off choosing Final Destination or Battlefield to practice on a legal tournament stage, but the training stage has its own benefits. This massive stage has a grid background, which you can use to study knockback differences and microspace. The grid also includes lines that indicate the side and top blast zones of Final Destination and Battlefield. Among the more useful settings such as CPU damage percent, you can also add more CPUs, turn on fixed damage, and more. Multiple CPUs aren't too useful, but they can help you practice your defensive movement to avoid lots of hitboxes. Fixed damage keeps the CPU's percent unchanged so they don't take damage from attacks. This could be used to study the knockback of moves without needing to reset, but otherwise won't help much. The trajectory guide is a neat option that shows you where an opponent will be launched at 0, 50, and 100%. This can help you understand the knockback growth of your attacks to get an idea of how your combos will change as percents increase. The speed settings are very useful. Slowing down the game might help you learn some difficult combos or techniques, although it's usually good to learn them at full speed to get proper muscle memory. The one-frame buffer setting is really unique. With it, you can hold the L button for normal speed or tap it to advance one frame at a time. You can use this to check the frame data on any of your moves or test frame-perfect combos and techniques with ease. Increasing speed to 1.5 is great for practicing with slow-charging mechanics like Cloud's Limit or Wario's Waft. For Waft, you can also use training mode to spawn items and consume them with his chomp. 
Items in training mode can also help you practice teching or put you into positions to recover. There's a classic power shielding practice using a green shell on Onat, which will work just fine with parrying too. Displaying invincibility will show you both invincibility in green and intangibility in blue. These can be studied in greater detail by using the frame-by-frame -frame setting and adjusting the camera, which can be done by pressing Y in the setting screen. You can also press Z in the setting screen to review your character's special moves. So you've got your movement and combos down. You're confident with your execution, but you need more practice interacting with the real opponent. Is training mode no longer useful to you? Well, for one thing, you can always get better at your execution, so it's still good to practice those a bit more. If you want more experience fighting a real opponent, though, you can actually get surprisingly good practice against a level 9 CPU in training mode. As you've probably realized, trying to fight a CPU with the intention of simply beating it will not help much, as they can be endlessly frame-trapped and choose many unsafe options. You can, however, focus on reacting to the CPU's gameplay to improve in many situations. In neutral, you can practice with punishing, using your movement to avoid the CPU's options and react with a quick punish. And you can likewise react to ledge options to trap and cover the CPU as they attempt to get back on stage. If you go in with specific goals in mind, level 9s can actually help you a lot. Training mode isn't the most important practice, nor is it the only way to get better at Smash, but it's a vital training method that every top player has spent many hours with, and you can too. If this video taught you something new, make sure to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to ProGuides and click that bell to keep up with our future uploads.